Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we'll be checking out the 2016 Acura ILX. This is an entry level luxury sedan starting at about 28,000 while the vehicle we're testing today is just under 36,000 with three separate packages decking it out in tech as well as interior and exterior features. Under the hood is a 2.4 liter inline four cylinder engine, dual overhead cams with variable valve timing, lift and duration for the intake valves. The engine has a compression ratio of 11.6 to one producing 201 horsepower at 6,800 RPM and 180 pound feet of torque at 3,800 RPM. One of the ways they were able to increase low end torque was by using a dual stage intake manifold. There is a set of four butterfly valves which are used to actuate the process. At low RPM, the air travels through a set of long runners, improving low end torque. At higher RPM, the system switches over to a short set of intake runners for increased high end power. This works in combination with the VTEC system, where at engine speeds above 4900 RPM, the intake system shifts to a high lift, long duration cam profile for more top end power. Engine torque is sent through an 8 speed dual clutch transmission to the front wheels. As far as the interior, there's plenty of space in here for me as the driver. I'm about 6'1", and I've got plenty of space for my legs. I don't come into contact with anything. You've got these cloth seats with leather bolsters. They're pretty comfortable. They've got a nice amount of cushion to them. As far as the steering wheel, you've got all kinds of control on that for your Bluetooth, your audio, and your adaptive cruise control system. You also have these two screens here as far as the navigation, infotainment, climate control. You do have dual zone climate control down here as well as heated seats for the front driver and passenger. And so over Overall, up in the front, I don't really have any complaints. As far as visibility, looking out the front, it's somewhat narrow, uh, but not too bad. Looking to the sides is fine. Checking your blind spots, fine. And out the rear, a little bit cramped back there, but not too bad overall as far as visibility. The downside of the interior of this car is when you get into the back seats, there's not too much leg room and there's really not much headroom at all. Uh, for me, I wasn't really able to sit back there. My head was coming into contact with the ceiling. So what's it like to drive? Well, one of the first things I noticed is once I let my foot off the brake pedal, uh, when I turned the vehicle on and had it in drive is that it was very smooth to start accelerating much like an automatic transmission and usually this isn't the case with dual clutch transmission vehicles they kind of hesitate uh, to engage that first gear and start engaging the clutch for the first gear and they're kind of lurchy uh, at low speeds. And so that was kind of a strange to me. And so then I went up to a stoplight and I started accelerating. And another thing that's common with dual clutch transmissions or manual transmissions is that you match the transmission to the engine speed directly. So as you press on the gas, the RPMs go up directly with it. But what I noticed was this, was that if I put my foot down, the revs can spike up. And that's not something typical of a dual clutch transmission. So I'm thinking to myself, is this really a dual clutch transmission? This doesn't make any sense. Well, Acura is more clever than I am, and so what they've done is they've fitted a torque converter to the dual clutch transmission. So you can have a difference in speed between the engine and transmission by using a torque converter in between. And so what that allows you to do is you can have a very smooth engagement in low speeds. So you don't have to use slip in the clutch pack, which is typically a rough process. It can have additional wear uh, and it's not going to be all that smooth. And so you can have that slip in the torque converter and have that clutch pack fully engaged. And so it's much smoother. The other advantage of using a torque converter with a dual clutch transmission is that what it enables you to do is have torque multiplication. So at a stop when you, you know, you're flooring it and you're starting to launch or whatever, you're going to do to accelerate fast, you have torque multiplication through the torque converter and you can get better acceleration. So this will actually be faster uh, from a stop than if it was just purely a dual clutch transmission and you had to slip that clutch and then start going. So that's pretty clever too, uh, what they've done with that. And it all seems to work out pretty well and a very smooth experience. And at the same time, you get the benefit of the dual clutch transmission with, of course, the very quick shifts. So quicker shifting than an automatic transmission, but just as smooth and also good at launching. Now, as far as the ride itself, it's pretty comfortable in here, pretty quiet as well. You know, some there are certainly luxury vehicles which are quieter, but you have to keep in mind this car is starting at $28,000. Uh, so overall, the interior is pretty quiet and the ride itself is pretty smooth. Now you can put it into a manual mode and one of the cool features is called this double kick down. So I'm coming into the corner here, I tap the left paddle shifter twice and it slams it down into the second gear. So it skips over third from fourth. You don't need to uh, go into each individual gear. It skips over and gets directly into second, which is pretty cool because it saves time, does a quick shift and gets you down into the gear that you want. Now in these corners, I honestly haven't noticed too much understeer or oversteer. It seems pretty well balanced uh, when you push it pretty hard. Of course, front wheel drive, so if you do floor it, you're gonna start to understeer as the front tires spin, uh, but overall it seems to handle it pretty well. And 
actually it's a pretty light car it's only 3100 pounds so even though it's only got 200 horsepower uh, power to weight ratio is actually pretty close to something like a Mazda Miata uh, and so when you do put your foot down you've got a decent amount of torque and it goes pretty quick Strong brakes as well. The thing with the brakes is that they are pretty touchy. So if you were to map, for example, uh, the amount that you press the brake in versus the amount of braking force that you get, it would kind of spike initially and then taper off. So you get a lot of braking in the initial touch of the brake and then it kind of gets a little bit more linear as you get past that point. As far as the dual clutch transmission, it does seem to work pretty quick. Rev match downshifts and upshifts are also pretty quick. My one complaint, and this is fairly small, is that you know if you're driving around the city or something like that uh, and you do do an upshift, uh, it does kind of have a little forward jolt to it. It's not super smooth. Uh, and this is kind of similar to what I felt in the Mitsubishi Evo with the dual clutch transmission, where the transition isn't all that smooth uh, when upshifting. Downshifting seems to be pretty good. You do get a decent amount of engine braking of course but with that torque converter it kind of helps uh, mitigate any roughness in there and it kind of smoothens it out so honestly downshifts do feel pretty smooth and overall I mean it seems to handle pretty well a light car I mean it seems fairly large on the outside but it's honestly pretty light what's interesting to me is if I was to compare this to the Lexus IS 250 which I tested which of course is a 2015 model they have since released the 2016 IS 200 which is different has a different engine but my point is this has almost the same amount of horsepower almost the same amount of torque very close like within five horsepower and five torque uh, and it's significantly lighter over 300 pounds lighter uh, it's not quite as quite quiet on the inside but you know basically same power levels with a lot less weight so it is definitely more fun to drive and what's also impressive about this is the fuel economy the Lexus IS 250 honestly it, it didn't make sense how the fuel economy wasn't that great in it to me this is rated 25 in the city 36 on the highway it's rated five miles per gallon combined better than the Lexus IS 250 uh, this of course is front-wheel drive and the Lexus is rear-wheel drive but regardless uh, the fuel economy that you can get of this is pretty astounding and considering you know the Lexus didn't really have any more power uh, it wasn't necessarily quicker uh, it's kind of unfortunate uh, that it didn't even get good fuel economy so you know at least this excels in fuel economy and it's somewhat decently quick because it is lightweight now the Lexus IS200 uh, comes with a different engine, different power levels, uh, different experience altogether. But remember, you know that car's starting at around thirty-seven thousand versus this is starting at twenty-eight thousand, so it's not exactly a fair comparison. Okay, so we'll get a quick zero to sixty in. I've got the traction control off. I'm going to put it at about two thousand RPM. Uh, the torque converter, of course, will be spinning up a bit and then let off. Hopefully, we won't get too much wheel spin and we'll get a decent time in. I'm just going to leave it in sport mode, let it do the shifting. So we do have some wheel spin there. And 60. Seem to be decently quick. So driving on the highway, I've got the adaptive cruise control set at 65. It'll do all the adjustments for me if we get into traffic. And you know, uh, not too much noise in here, a little bit of tire noise, a little bit of wind noise, not too bad overall, looking at about 76, 77 decibels. Um, better than some of the cars I've tested, but worse than some of the luxury vehicles I've tested. Two other things worth mentioning, the adaptive cruise control system, uh, when you are in traffic like we are here, it, it can kind of overreact in certain situations. So if someone merges into your lane, it tends to brake pretty aggressively uh, in order to set the gap versus some systems I've been in, you know they kind of check the speed and if the speed of the car in front of you isn't that much different even though they're pretty close it'll slowly back off versus being really aggressive about it not a huge complaint I mean it's gonna do the trick it's just gonna kind of break a little bit more aggressively than you probably would on the highway the other thing I wanted to mention was that the sound system in this is actually really good and although I do have a few rattles uh, which you know for an entry-level luxury sedan I guess I wouldn't want to have that there's a few rattles in the back when the sound system going off but the sound system overall is very good very good job 
of balancing uh, deep notes as well as the higher frequencies together uh, so you get a very crisp sound system sounds excellent the one complaint of course just being that you do get some rattles in the back uh, when I've had the sound system up pretty high now as far as steering feel it is pretty light and there's not a whole lot of feedback but I'd certainly put it on par with the other luxury vehicles I've tested um, basically what happens here is you start to sacrifice steering feedback uh, and replace that with comfort and it certainly does that it's definitely a comfortable experience another thing is the body roll itself you know coming into a corner hard you do get a decent amount of body roll as you change the steering angle um, once again kind of typical with luxury vehicles because you have a softer suspension typically where you know you absorb bumps pretty well and overall the ride experience is very comfortable versus sporty that said you know this is actually a pretty fun car to drive for it being in this segment um, power levels aren't all that excessive but as I mentioned it's a really light car the dual clutch is fun to drive and so in these twisties I mean you put your foot down it's pretty fun going around these corners so thank you guys for watching if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below How's it do on the bump? Wow, stability didn't kick in. Usually it kicks in there.